Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. I'm sure you all have heard about the Titanic, right? I mean, a really big boat back in the 1920s. It was the most technological, advanced, and luxurious passenger liner of its time. I mean, it was reported that the ship was built so well that someone had the audacity to say, not even God himself could sink this boat. Well, little did they know that this great human marvel would not even last a good week of operation before it would sink to the bottom of the ocean. And it's interesting how as we, the human race, accomplish great things and have reached to new heights in technology and in science. And it's interesting how the pinnacle of human accomplishments um, we at times dare to challenge God himself as we could ever defy his power and authority. Today, we're going to talk about the significance and the meaning of the events around the Tower of Babel. Let's start with the word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done. Lord, give us wisdom, give us understanding. In Jesus we pray, amen. As we continue to look at the unfolding of the events after the great flood, we fast forward the years where the earth was becoming repopulated with humans. And although hundreds of years had gone by since the flood, it was still fresh in the minds of the people because the stories were kept alive and passed from generation to generation to generation. And as the earth's population continued to grow and the people started to evolve, they decided that it would be wise to come up with a plan to keep God from destroying the earth again. Let's read this in Genesis 11 verses 1 through 4. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn through them thoroughly. And they had bricks of stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. As you can see, there was a great sense of unity among the inhabitants of the earth. I mean, I don't know what kind of government that these people had, but it seems like it was very, very effective. And considering that, that everyone on earth spoke the same exact language, I can only imagine how quickly they made have made new discoveries and how effective their sense of collaboration, their sense of unity has been. But that was not the problem. That was not the issue. The problem started when they got so filled up with themselves. They got so big headed that uh, they were under the impression that they could challenge God or even act as God themselves. Even the language used in the text shows some similarities with the unity of the Godhead when God said, let us make men. Similarly, the people said, let us make bricks. Let us build a tower. This shows that they understood the power of acting as one to accomplish something that they had never done before. And on the surface, it may seem like a sensible undertaking considering that the earth was just recovering from a huge disaster. But if you think about it, the entire idea behind the project was a direct challenge to God himself. First off, why would they need a tower to protect them from a future universal flood when God already said that the earth would never be destroyed by flood again? Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said and will he not do it or has he spoken and will not fulfill it? God even gave the people a sign of this alliance to affirm his promise to not flood the earth again. So the idea of building a tower for protection in case God does not keep his word is an insult. 
Secondly, one of the motives of the project was for the builders to make a name for themselves. They wanted their names to be remembered and associated with the power that would build this great edifice or this new vessel that could save humanity against the fury of a mighty God. They want their names to remember forever, just as God has a glorious name that can never be forgotten. And they imagine that even after they died, their names would never be forgotten because that building is still there. This great accomplishment would essentially give them a sense of immortality. Third, they want to defy God's command to live all over the earth. Their goal was to settle in one area where they could maintain the unity that could give them true strength to accomplish anything that they put their minds to. But really, how long could such a unity really last? I mean, there is a saying that goes like this. Nothing brings you together like a common en enemy. Nothing binds a people to their leader like a common enemy. Now, I don't want to say that they declared God their enemy, but the project of building a tower for their survival in case God tries to destroy them again, well, let's just say it created a bond to keep these people together. So while on the surface, this project may have seemed very logical to those who lived in those days, it was nothing more than a subtle attempt inspired by Satan himself to challenge or even replace God on the earth. Now, let me ask you this. Are you, or rather, have you ever been involved in a project or a course of action which on the surface may seem logical or even innocent, but in reality has often or some hidden motives that are inspired by the devil to accomplish his purpose? As we reflect on the Tower of Babel this week, think about how often we hear people make tremendous sacrifices, whether it be in their health, their families, um, or their faith, only to make a name for themselves. How about the blind and the relentless pursuit of wealth, either as a security blanket or as a means to do for yourself what perhaps you feel that God cannot do for you? Have you found yourself pushing hard to accomplish something that you really, I mean, really want, where deep inside you know that the path that you are taking, God has not intended it for you? In short, are you building a tower, baby, right now that you should not be building? Hopefully today, devotion, they encourage you to do some soul searching to make sure that you are not making the mistake of challenging the will of God. Or worse yet, think that you can replace him with a frail and perishable human accomplishments. Saints of God, keep the faith.